Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org here with SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage of Dell Storage Forum 2012, live from Boston, Massachusetts. Joining me for this segment is a Cube alum, Nick Iliadis, who's the CTO of Broadcom's uh, networking and, and infrastructure group. Nick, wel yep. welcome back. Welcome, thank you. So, so we're doing a little focus here on networking here at the, at the storage conference because there, there, there's a tight combination between the networking yes. and storage. So we just heard Dario Zamarian talk about how Merchant Silicon is the, the, the foundation uh, for you know, lots of switch interoperability, getting beyond proprietariness in the network, and, and of course, uh, you know, Broadcom is, is the, the leader in this space. So, um, you know, did, did you get to hear a little bit of what Dario yeah. said? Yeah, and I did you know, what, what do you think about uh, Dell's moves in the networking space? I think Dell's being very aggressive, and uh, they're really putting their you know, best foot forward in, in the networking space. Uh, they're a great customer and partner for Broadcom. We work very closely with them. And I think they're going to be very successful because, as Dario said, they're you know they're new in, s in terms of networking. They're putting in this b fabulous portfolio with you know Force 10, Sonic Wall. They had their, their their existing product, the the Power Connect. So it, it's really putting together a, a very complete end-to-end -end portfolio. You know, and now tying storage into it, they're you know they're they're playing with iSCSI and the Equalogic acquisition they did several years ago really brought storage and networking together in, in a big way. Yeah, a absolutely. So while Dell's relatively new to uh, the, the networking piece, you know, fr from an Ethernet standpoint, Dell's had a lot of components there. And uh, can you speak a little bit to kind of Dell's partnership uh, with Broadcom over the years? Certainly. So uh, iSCSI, which is the, the one I just mentioned, so we were one of the first companies to work with them to get really high performance iSCSI, our iSCSI offload on our controllers in conjunction with our switches and their Equalogic servers, their, uh, storage. Their storage was uh, second to none. That, that was very high performance. We worked with them to really tune both the controller, the switch, and their uh, storage controller, their their storage array, to have the highest performance in the network. And okay. today, and, those and are it works seamlessly because of the co collaboration that we. And work of together. course, most people think of uh, the servers when they think of Dell. Also, Correct. Is, is the partnership with Broadcom extend there? Yeah. So we we um, with this um, this latest release, you know, the Romney cycle, um, we've launched seven controllers with them back in March, and there's three more coming up very soon. So ten new controllers, both gig and ten gig, that are now shipping. Some of them are the default configuration on the Dell servers, others are NDS cards, either these, these pluggable cards or MES cards that go inside of uh, the Blade system. So complete uh, offering for uh, gig and 10 gig. And with, with our offload technology, both iSCSI and FCOE are both offloaded in the uh, controller, so that frees up CPU cycles, it also gives you much higher performance than what's available from the other uh, competitors. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm wondering if you could speak to, when I think back when iSCSI first rolled out, people just said, give me a standard NIC. I don't really need offloads, I don't need to understand storage, and as, as we've seen, that there actually is more intelligence that's been baking into the network, and when you think about FCOE, it's, well, maybe the storage stack that I've had for the last decade or so should be what customers go to, but uh, Broadcom and Intel and others have been moving into the space, so can you speak as to, you know, where is the intelligence, you know, who owns, you know, kind of that, that knowledge, and how does Broadcom fit into it? So Broadcom, um, obviously we, we were not a legacy fiber channel player, but in developing FCOE, it really leveraged on all our strengths that we had with iSCSI, because iSCSI is also you know, a block-based protocol, and they're both using Ethernet as a, as a transport, so it was a natural fit for us to be able to develop FCOE on top of what we already done for iSCSI. And using the offload technology, we have very high performance, millions of IOPS per, per, uh, per controller, which is far beyond what you can get with a, with a non-offloaded controller. And the way we look at this is that frees up the CPU to do more higher value applications. Instead of moving data from point A to point B, the CPU is now available to actually run applications or more virtual machines. So offload really buys you more performance in the server as well as performance in the network. Okay, but don't all the controllers have some sort of offload? I mean, Intel has it, Emulix and QLogic have it, you have it, what's, what's the differentiation? Uh, our, our offload is, is highly tuned, high performance, and it uses a minimal amount of, of CPU cycles. So in terms of, if you compare us to the, the competition, we're, you know, um, sometimes, 150% or 200% faster than those other devices. So that plus the, the networking plus Dell's you know, uh, Equalogic products, which also have Broadcom uh, components in them as well, work end to end seamlessly. Yeah, so, so you've got a couple of touch points in the network. Um, so Dario, one of the things he talked about is starting to see 40 gig for the uplinks. Um, where are we with the, trans the customer adoption of 10 gigabit, and, and how soon is 40 gig and 100 gig? Yeah. We're seeing 40 gig uh, <laughs> getting rolled out now in, in a significant 
matter between the top of rack and the end of row. So that's, that tier of the network with, goes from the, the access to the ag aggregation is 40 gig enabled. Uh, when you start taking you know, two port 10 gig NIC cards and feeding them to a top of rack switch, now you, you have capacity that you need to get to the next level of the network. So 40 gig, the economics of 40 gig is really compelling because it's actually less than four times 10 gig. If you buy the, uh, the QSFP cables, you're really buying four 10 gig bit channels, but now they're packaged as a, as a single cable. The other thing about the 40 gig ports is you can actually break them out as, two, as four 10 gig ports, so you can actually mix and match on a per, if you buy a switch that has 16 40 gig ports, some of those ports can actually be configured as four ports of 10 gigs, some of them can be configured as a single port of 40. So it's very flexible in its, its deployment uh, capabilities. Okay, so, so one of the things I didn't get a, to ask Dario, and I was wondering if you might be able to help tease apart, is uh, Dell networking tends to focus on ra rather scale-out architecture. Um, they do have kind of the chassis, but most of their pieces are scale-out, um, and I, I, I believe Broadcom has some solutions that get to really terabits of bandwidth through rather than a single chassis, but scaling out. Can you walk sure. us through Certainly. how that works? Yeah. I really can't talk about specifically what we're doing with, with Dell because it's you know it would be sure. things that are not announced, so it, it's uh, it's actually Dell's job to announce their own products. But in general, in, in the industry, uh, uh, Broadcom is out championing what we call the data center fabric, and the data center fabric allows uh, high bandwidth horizontal traffic, so which a lot of these uh, applications like Hadoop really utilize. In, in virtualization, I would say, is very similar. Yeah, and, and actually all the cloud data centers have a lot of east-west traffic. So you want to have a fabric that's able to provide that high bandwidth cross-sectional uh, uh, traffic. So we're out there deploying, we have really two solutions. We have a packet-based solution and we have what's called the, the Dune Fabric cell-based solution. And it's up to our customers to decide do they want to use a, a packet fabric, which is basically Ethernet links set up in a, in a CLOS configuration and multi-path using technology such as Trill. Oh, I'm sorry, CLOS, could you just CLOS, I'm sorry, CLOS is the name of the, of the, of the guy who invented yep. this fabric that looks like a butterfly. It's really, a, it's like a mesh. So you have basically have many-to-many -many kind of connections and the, the industry term it's for it is called CLOS. Okay, th that's different than a leaf spine. Uh, yeah, because what, what ends up happening, you have each box talking to uh, all the other boxes. So it basically looks like a crosshatch okay. of connections. Like a fabric. Like a fabric, yeah. yeah absolutely. Look, uh, and something okay. people call it butterfly because it looks like a butterfly, but okay. it's, it's a fabric and it's called CLOS after the, the inventor. And, and those links are each independent Ethernet links, and then you load balance them across them, and you use the topologies, I mean, protocols such as Trill or others to create, you know, each path is active, so yep. you, none of them are in standby. Yeah. So Get, getting rid of spanning tree. And getting rid of spanning tree, the, you know, exactly. Yeah. So, every, you know, so now you have a lot of cross-sectional bandwidth. That's a packet-based solution. The cell-based solution is we have a, a Broadcom acquired company called Dune several years ago, and this is a cell-based fabric, which uh, pro provides you even higher bandwidth than the packet-based fabric in, in, in terms of tens of, of terabits. And, you know, our recent announcements we had at Interop for our, our 200 gig network processor, which is two ports of 10 gig, you can actually build out, theoretically, a 400 terabit multi-chassis configuration. Now that's if you go to the max, and, and it's a lot of, there's a lot of fiber involved in that, but the architecture will support up to 400 terabits, which is a phenomenal amount of bandwidth. Yeah, great, it's, it's an interesting architectural <laughs> discussion. If you look yeah. on kind of the storage side, there's the virtualization piece, and then if you look at things like Big Data and, and Hadoop, it's a different architecture. While networking, we seem to have a good match between whether it's your virtual you know, fabric or uh, going to something like Hadoop, is kind of scale-out architecture, those kind of fit together. Correct. Um, the other hot networking topic these days, of course, software-defined networks are SDN. Uh, what, what's, what's your take on where we are with yeah, this? Yeah, so, so Broadcom was, a, was an early pioneer on SDN, we actually worked with Stanford in the early days. The, the reference uh, work, the, the initial uh, SDN open flow work was done on, on Broadcom based switches. And still today you can actually order through the, the Stanford website a you know, reference platform that's running what's called Indigo and then you can run open flow on top of that. So we are in the forefront of defining products for SDN. We are a member of the Open Networking Foundation, ONF, and participate in the, the work to, to standardize uh, what we call uh, software-defined networking or open flow. But open flow, I think, is just one instantiation of what uh, uh, software-defined networking is. I think it's a, there's a broader set of 
uh, capabilities that are being developed by a lot of companies that fall under the umbrella of SDN. So just saying OpenFlow, I think, is, is doing SDN a disservice. I think SDN yeah. is a much broader topic, and, and you can really look and slice it in many different ways. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely. And as we talked with Dario, it doesn't mean that, you know, switches go away and physical switches. We still have to have physical switches. Yeah. Um, fundamentally, is there change to the silicon that you guys make on the switches going to SDN? or is it Yeah, so, so one of the reasons we're members of ONF is because we want to make sure that as the standard is being defined that they that the underlying silicon can actually implement it, right? We do, if you create a standard in the absence of the people that actually have to implement it, sometimes you may not do all the optimal things. So by working with ONF, we're making sure that we realize things that can be put in silicon and also help drive the silicon in the direction that's optimized for STN. So it's really a, it's a, it's a, it's a back and forth kind of a relationship. I mean, the, the way I look at SDN, it's really creating a platform for people to add value on top of the network. Whereas the past network was really turning ports on and off, setting up ACLs, now you have the ability to program even higher level functionality on top of the network. One of the best cases that, that I use is power management. The, the, the ability to go out and look at your network as a whole, see where the traffic is, see where the traffic is, and move virtual machines to from less utilized service to more utilized, get, get higher utilization, then turn off parts of your network that are not needed anymore and save power. Okay, so, so uh, Broadcom being a supplier to the switch manufacturer sits in an interesting place Correct. in the market. And while I know you love you know, all of your customers equally, uh, we've seen a lot of consolidation in the industry recently, uh, the, the kind of the verticalization with companies like IBM and Dell and HP. Um, you know, can, can you give some thought as to where you see kind of the owned by uh, you know, a company like an IBM or HP versus the independent networking guys? You know, wh wh where's, uh, wh where's this sit in the marketplace? Yeah. Who's innovating? I think, I think innovation is occurring on, on all fronts. I think the, the big vertically integrated players are creating solutions, and then you know, they, they have the servers, they have the switches, they have the storage, so they, they can actually create this end-to-end -end value proposition. What we see from the smaller independent, let's say smaller independent switches, I see a lot of uh, velocity. So these these companies are able to bring out some new products quicker and, and get to market with some unique features. And I think that complements what you get from the, the the vertically integrated companies. So you have the agile, creating some new value propositions, maybe niche market uh, type of solutions where you have the larger OEMs that create the end-to-end -end solutions that are kind of packaged for the end user beforehand. Okay, so, so Nick, you, you're the CTO of, of this group within Broadcom. You've been attending a lot of these shows. You know, wh what's exciting you these days in the networking industry? So virtualization of the network is, is, is really exciting because I think we, we're at the infancy of being able to take the network and segment it into sub-networks that are optimized for the virtual machines that are running at the end, the end points and in the hybrid model where the, the virtualization actually extends over the wide area into the enterprise. So now the enterprise has an extension into the, the hybrid cloud where you can actually move your workloads out there and move them back and they're secure, they're isolated from from the rest of the, the things that are happening in that, that cloud data center. I think that's a very exciting area right now. Yeah, so, so it's interesting you say that. I, you know, I think back to the 90s when we had, you know, kind of the, the excess, the, the service providers, um, and, you know, there's been this promise uh, that we're going to have be able to move things. Um, you know, our, our CTO, David Floyer, is very hesitant about saying, you know, why do you want to move your data? And it's, it's the bandwidth and the speed, you know, there's only so much you can fit over mm -hmm. a pipe. So, you know, what, what's different now? What, what technologies are going to enable this so that this isn't just a pipe dream? So the, 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 the WAN technologies, so 10 gigabit is now widely de deployed in most service provider networks and you can actually, if you want to pay for it, you can buy a 10 gigabit link or wavelength right to your enterprise. So. That, that gives you the bandwidth. And then the, the service provider are now providing the, the SLAs and the, the, the serviceability and, and the uh, reliability for those networks. So you can actually treat that WAN connection as an extension of your, of your local area network or your data center connection and then work with your uh, data center provider, your cloud provider, to you know, either do a platform as a service or a... Um, you know, uh, infrastructure as a service, depending on the level that you need, you need, you know, do you want just bare iron that you're going to run your own OS and applications on, or do you want a platform that is able to run your applications on top of? And I think this gives this, the enterprises flexibility to be able to not have to deploy everything in-house, move some th things into the cloud, and also gives them some disaster recovery, because now you have the ability to move things somewhere where you, you, you know, you can be safe from, a, let's say, an earthquake or, or, or a hurricane or something like that. 
All right. Well, Nick Oyadis from Broadcom, thank you for joining us here again on theCUBE. Always appreciate your insight. Pleasure. And uh, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon, SiliconANGLE TV's continuous coverage from Dell Storage Forum, and we'll be right back after this break. Thank you, Stu.